name is Camilla and I'm a producer, director and I work for Flashing Lights, which is a television production company based in London. And we make all sorts of programmes ranging from children's programmes for CBBS up to like documentaries for Channel 4. My brother went to Mary Hair. I didn't. I went to a men's room school. So I remember him coming home at the weekends and he would be full of all these stories about the things that they got up to or um, that like teacher, friends and, and all, those, all those sort of lovely things. So I approached the school back in 2013 and I said, would you be willing to open your door to the camera, that camera crew? And uh, fast forward two years later, we were in there with the camera and it was really quite an incredible journey. The whole point of the film is to show that deaf teenagers are just like hearing teenagers. There's nothing different about them. They had the same ambition, aspiration, same up and down. So that was always my vision that I had. In the film, we have three sets of stories. We've got Lewis, who's going through a cochlear implant operation and the procedure that follows. We've got Andrew who is sort of thinking about his next step and his sort of aspiration to become a, the next deaf prime minister. And we've got Faye who had a twin, May, and they are about to leave Mary Hair, so it's almost like their preparation for the, the here and now. This team, 2016, was the start of the actual filming, and we were there until July, to the end of the academic year. So technically, we've been filming the whole year from September to July. For me, the two key things were probably Lewis switch on, because it was such a sort of a, a very emotional day. We had no idea what was going to happen. I'm on my way to the hospital with my parents and the sign language interpreter. I don't know if it's going to work or not, it's scary because I've been waiting for this for such a long time and it means a lot to me. The specialist will activate the external processor using a computer and will adjust it until I'm able to hear something. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. It's on now. Slowly going to turn it up. It's quiet. Loud, not sure. Yeah, no. I don't know. But I think another thing for me was probably the prom. Um, it was just fantastic seeing all these people because they've got, I've been there for a year and I sort of got to know a lot of them throughout the year and to see them in, the, in their dresses and like, getting out of the limo was really special. I think Channel 4 was the channel that we wanted to pitch to because they are really great to make into a cutting edge documentary that are not patronising um, and that are done in a really clever way and that are told in a really compelling sort of narrative. At a, at a deaf filmmaker, I, I never want to go out and make a film just because they're deaf or like, oh, we have to make a film because I've got hearing difficulties or anything like that. I've always been really anti doing that. I will only make a film if it really a really good story, but they just happen to be deaf. They had to be incidental rather than at the forefront. I think this is the first film that ever shows what it's really like to have a cochlear implant. I think there's too much um, stuff on the internet where you see someone having a switch on and then they can hear perfectly, but people forget that these people did have hearing before. Where you know, someone like Lewis, who's deaf and bad, it's quite a different experience. Mm. I recorded the sound and I was thinking, what is this sound? What is this sound? And I was shocked to find out that it's birds. 
This is the sound. It's really high, but it's good. I'm really happy I can hear it. When people watch the film, I really hope that they will sort of, for the first time ever, for a lot of them, see the deaf teenagers are just the same as hearing teenagers. There are no, there's nothing different about her. There's nothing, like we've all got the same goals and aspirations and so forth. So I kind of hope that it will change the attitude of some hearing people who might just think, oh, deaf people can't really go as far in life, who can't really achieve as much. Um, and I hope this open more doors for the deaf community in general. There are not enough deaf people working in television and there's definitely not enough deaf female producers, directors, camera people, editors um, out there. And I think a lot of people, for them to see us with the camera, was probably quite inspiring and to see a deaf filmmaker as well was probably even more inspiring. So I did have a lot of people coming up to me saying, oh, how do I get into television? How do I get into filmmaking? And actually, as a result of this film, a lot of them have actually gone on to do film studies at university or have gone on courses. I'm really proud of that and I hope it continues.